Those are some of the very important enzymes necessary for uh, uh, amino acid metabolism or degradation, okay? The first one is ALT, right? ALT is going to uh, take the, uh, the nitrogen from alanine, give it to alpha ketoglutarate to form glutamate. There are other transaminases that do the same thing, donating their amine <coughs> to alpha ketoglutarate to form glutamate. What's left from uh, alanine is the keto acid of alanine, which is pyruvate. Okay, three important things. Transaminases are reversible. <coughs> they require uh, vitamin B6, pyridoxal phosphate, and they should also tell you that glutamate, that's the third important thing, is the sink for many of the nitrogens coming from uh, uh, several amino acids. <coughs> and alanine is an uh, example through ALT. Uh, then you have AST. AST is going to <coughs> uh, convert take some of that nitrogen you collected in glutamate, give it to oxaloacetate to form aspartate, okay? And finally, you can produce ammonia directly from some of that glutamate you collected by glutamate dehydrogenase. <coughs> Again, glutamate dehydrogenase is a reversible enzyme, just like the transaminases, meaning it can produce ammonia and alpha ketoglutarate, or it can be used to resynthesize glutamate from ammonia and uh, alpha ketoglutarate. <coughs> so what's the point of all these three enzymes and this metabolism? The point really is to try to remove the nitrogens from amino acids. As we just said with glutamate dehydrogenase, you're producing ammonia. That ammonia is not good if it lingers in the cells. So, hence the importance of the urea cycle. So the urea cycle, really, the purpose of the urea cycle is to remove nitrogen slash ammonia from cells, from the body in a non-toxic form, say detoxifying ammonia, removing those nitrogen in a non-toxic form. So that's what urea does, the urea cycle. It'll incorporate two nitrogens in a molecule called urea. Urea is non-toxic. You may think otherwise, but urea is non-toxic. <coughs> it can be transported in the bloodstream and excreted by the kidneys. Okay, that's the first important thing to think about, that really the urea cycle is about metabolizing nitrogens, about disposing of ammonia and nitrogens in a non-toxic way. Second important thing is going to be about where it occurs, only in the liver. Urea cycle occurs only in the liver. Okay, uh, I want you to really remember that for sure. So, this is what it's doing. See what's needed for the urea cycle. Here's ammonia. Here's a CO2. Here's another source of nitrogen. So you have one nitrogen there, one nitrogen there. Here's a CO2 you end up producing really a molecule that has a carbon, an oxygen, and two nitrogens. And that carbon that's produced in the liver, I mean that molecule that's produced in the liver is non-toxic, can be released in the bloodstream, sent to the kidneys, 
and can be excreted by the kidneys. Okay, so this is the function of the urea cycle. Now we want to go through uh, <clears throat> some of the details. I'll, this is an old slide, but it's kind of, uh, I like it because of it's how big it is. Uh, so here's the mitochondria, okay? We're going to start with what I just was talking about. Here's the ammonia or ammonium. We can use them interchangeably, really. Ammonia becomes ammonium in the cell. Ammonia is a gas. Ammonium is when you protonate that. So here's the first nitrogen. And I want you to think that nitrogen most likely came from glutamate dehydrogenase. That ammonia came from the glutamate dehydrogenase reaction. Okay? So you got glutamate that collected a lot of the nitrogen. You go through glutamate dehydrogenase, you produce ammonia. Here's ammonia. <coughs> Here's CO2. You need two ATPs. You're going to condense the CO2 and ammonia together with the ATPs to form this activated molecule called carbamoyl phosphate. Okay? That's the beginning of the urea cycle. That's the first enzyme in the urea cycle. Its name is carbamoyl phosphate synthase. This is an activated intermediate that already has one of the nitrogens you need to make urea. Now you're going to need another amino acid we haven't talked about. It's called L-ornithine. You're going to condense L-ornithine ornithine with carbamoyl phosphate the enzyme here is called ornithine transcarbamylase. You form a new amino acid called citrulline. So the first two steps, CPS1, carbamyl phosphate synthase 1, ornithine transcarbamylase are in the mitochondria. Then citrulline is transported to the cytoplasm. And in the cytoplasm, you're going to condense it with the amino acid aspartate. Okay? So that's your other nitrogen. Think about this, this uh, 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 bold N there. This nitrogen is the other nitrogen that's going to be found in uh, urea. You have one there and one there. So, you form the molecule arginosuccinate. So, you attach the entire aspartate to citrulline to form arginosuccinate. So, now you have two nitrogens there. Enzymes called arginosuccinate synthase. Arginosuccinate synthase is broken down you remove the carbon skeleton from here in the form of fumarate by arginosuccinate lyase. What's left of the molecule is the amino acid arginine. This is all occurring here in the cytosol. Arginine, look at the side chain of arginine. It has two nitrogen and a carbon, and that's going to be where that urea will be made, will be coming from. Now an enzyme called arginase breaks this off, producing urea, which is this molecule there, and regenerating L-ornithine. 
And that's why this is called a cycle. Kind of just like the TCA cycle, you have to regenerate what you started out with. So we started out with carbonyl phosphate and ornithine. Now we regenerated ornithine, bring it back in. This way, this cycle can continue. Okay? So in effect, I want you to pay, we're going to go through all of these steps in a minute in, in a little more detail. But I want you to remember where you start and the steps, uh, the different enzymes. And I also want you to know the sources of the nitrogens. The first nitrogen coming in the form of ammonia, most likely from glutamate dehydrogenase reaction. Second nitrogen comes in the form of aspartate. And if you think about it, aspartate can be formed by AST, which actually is getting the nitrogen from glutamate. So in a sense, both nitrogens, the ammonia here and the nitrogen in aspartate, are both coming from glutamate. Okay, that's an important concept I'll remind you of as we go along. Okay, so here are all the enzymes that you want to know. The first enzyme is by far the most important enzyme and it's the rate limiting step, the rate limiting enzyme. Carbamyl phosphate synthase 1 requires CO2, ammonia, and two ATPs to form carbonyl phosphate. Second enzyme is ornithine transcarbamylase that condenses ornithine with carbonyl phosphate to form citrulline. Citrulline is now transported to the cytosol. In the cytosol, it condenses with aspartate. Aspartate is incorporated into citrulline to give you arginosuccinate. The enzyme is arginosuccinate synthase. Then arginosuccinate synthase. So aspartate is the second source of nitrogen. Those are the only two things that can get into the urea cycle. Either ammonia or nitrogen in the form of aspartate. No other forms of nitrogen can enter the urea cycle. Okay? Arginosuccinate is broken down to arginine by arginosuccinate lyase, releasing the carbon skeleton from here, fumarate. Uh, this is just to tell you that really the fumarate is recycled. Don't worry about all the details here, but it's recycled. It's not wasted. It's used to make malate or oxaloacetate and so on. Don't worry about the details here, but just it's recycled. Arginine formed by arginosuccinate lyase is broken down by arginase, which produces urea and ornithine, and ornithine is now transported back to the mitochondria and the cycle can begin again with another uh, molecule of carbamyl phosphate. Okay? So now what enzymes are in the mitochondria, what enzymes are in the cytoplasm, and the sequence. So the first enzyme is really the, by far the most important enzyme, and that's the enzyme that's regulated. It's regulated by uh, an allosteric molecule uh, called carbamyl phosphate synthase, uh, I mean, sorry, N-acetylglutamate uh, is the allosteric uh, activator of carbamyl phosphate synthase 1. So this is a derivative of an amino acid, glutamate, which binds to this molecule allosterically and activates it. Okay? So you absolutely need some of that to be there in order for this first enzyme to work. <clears throat> we'll talk about this molecule a little later and how it's made. Uh, 
The second enzyme, ornithine times carbonylase, uh, condenses the product of CPS1, carbonyl phosphate, with ornithine and forms citrulline. Citrulline is moved to the cytoplasm. Uh, in the cytoplasm, uh, uh, citrulline will be condensed with aspartate to get the second nitrogen from aspartate and that will uh, form arginosuccinate and the enzyme that makes that arginosuccinate synthase and then arginosuccinate lyase break that breaks that molecule to give you arginine and urea or sorry arginine and uh, fumarate and when you produce arginine so the last enzyme arginosuccinate uh, lyase is here to give you fumarate and arginine and arginine really contains the urea molecule in its structure so then the last enzyme is going to be arginase it's on the next slide uh, which will produce urea and ornithine regenerating ornithine so the cycle can go back on importantly I want to point out to you arginine the amino acid that's how it's synthesized in the body in the urea cycle as part of the urea cycle that's the biosynthetic way we make arginine okay the enzyme that breaks arginine is arginase and uh, gives you urea and uh, regenerates ornithine. <coughs> the most important really fate of urea is that it's going to, I'm not going to get into a lot of these details, but the most important thing is that urea produced in the liver is going to be released in the bloodstream sent to the kidneys as a non-toxic way of disposing of nitrogen okay so if you have kidney failure that urea can accumulate in the bloodstream and then eventually certain uh, 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 that results in breaking down the break it, breaking down of the urea can result in hyperammonemia meaning you have a lot of ammonia in the bloodstream and or urine okay so but the key thing here is that that is the major way we dispose of nitrogen through urea it's about 90 percent of nitrogen uh, in in urine is in the form of urea <clears throat> so this is what i want to remind you of this is the big picture just a quick uh, recap here you have glutamate as say you have protein degradation or from the diet uh, you can have for example here uh, alanine as an amino acid you go through alt it gives its nitrogen to alpha ketoglutarate you form glutamate okay so this could be an alt reaction if this amino acid is uh, alanine now glutamate we said can have one of two fates it it can give its nitrogen to oxaloacetate the keto acid oxaloacetate to form aspartate and what's left of glutamate is alpha ketoglutarate once that happens and this is really ast this reaction there would be ast aspartate transaminase is uh, catalyzes this reaction the other fate of glutamate that has collected nitrogen from many amino acids is glutamate dehydrogenase. It can release ammonia directly. So now you have the two sources of nitrogen 
This is really a very important conceptual slide, the two sources of nitrogen coming from glutamate. Why is that important? It's important in that these are the only two nitrogen forms that can enter the urea cycle, either ammonia or aspartate. Nothing else can enter the urea cycle uh, besides these two. Okay? So that's kind of the summary. You use three ATPs, and here's the source. The ammonia source is glutamate dehydrogenase. Aspartate source is most likely uh, from uh, the AST reaction uh, coming from glutamate. 